Well, I think it really starts with realizing that you don't love yourself, that most people don't. Most people feel they're not good enough, that they haven't done it right, they won't do it right, they'll never be enough, and they're definitely not lovable. And when we come from that space, it's very hard to create things for ourselves that are really good. So in the early days when I worked with people, I used to uh, fix this problem and fix that problem, and you'd have this a health thing, and we'd work on that, and we'd work on this. And one day I discovered, much to my amazement, that if I would help people learn to love themselves, to really accept themselves as they are, we didn't have to work around problems because it was almost like a miracle. Everything seemed to fall away. It's a hard one for people because we're, we grow up believing that we're not good enough and nothing is right. Uh, I remember lots of times I would ask people, well, what is really wrong with you? What have you done that is so terrible that you're not acceptable to yourself? And I never, ever, ever got an answer that made any sense. You know, they might say something like, well, I'm too fat. Well, so, <laughs> it's, you know, uh, but I, th when you talk about loving yourself, a lot of people think that that's vanity, but it isn't really, it has nothing to do with that, uh, that is narcissistic, but to really care for you and to acknowledge that you are an important being, it's almost like in the Bible they would say, uh, you recognize that you are a child of God, that therefore you are perfect. But even if you're not a biblical person, if you can recognize that you are a being that has self-worth, if you can really recognize your own worth, then you start to treat yourself differently. And I think that's what's so very important about loving yourself, is you stop beating yourself up, you stop making yourself wrong, you stop talking about how awful you are, and you stop saying things like, I'm really stupid and stuff, and you start to treat yourself with a certain amount of respect. And this makes an enormous difference because what you give out in life is what comes back to you. So if you're giving out a feeling of, I'm okay, I'm good enough as I am, and I am acceptable, and I love life, and I love me, and you start having gratitude for yourself and for life, then life treats you differently because you are having a different vibration that you're giving out and getting back. And that's when things really start to flow. Now, a lot of people don't realize it, but you have to practice. You just have to start it. And that's why I try to get people to do a lot of mirror work. If you look in the mirror, just simple things like looking in the mirror in your own eyes and saying, I love you. I really, really love you. And it helps if you use your name, Louise, I love you. I really love you. It gets to that little child inside that has been rejected for so long. And it breaks open sort of a, a dam or a, a door or whatever you want to call it. And it's like little miracles start to happen. Lots of little good things happen. And the universe loves grateful people. The more grateful you are, the more you get to be grateful about. It's that simple. Life is really very simple. We make it enormously complicated but it doesn't have to be. Everybody's on a journey from the time we're born till the time we leave. But when we go on a spiritual journey, it seems to be more conscious. And we begin to make conscious choices about life instead of just going on and getting up in the morning and doing our stuff and then going to bed. We begin to make conscious choices of our, our thoughts and our actions and even the foods we eat and things like that. And it's uh, putting your foot on the pathway one step at a time. And some of us do very devious journeys and we take lots of little side tracks and we don't get very far really. And some of us just c are very conscientious about it and go one step after another and go closer to our pathway, which is really, um, to me, I think enlightenment is letting go of all the things we believe that are not benefiting us, us in life, or the barriers to our life, to the good things in life, and to release them one by one and just think, I don't have to believe that anymore, or do I want to believe that anymore? And making a conscious choice. When we can understand that every single thing we believe 
has been a choice. And it may or may not be true. It can be true for you and not for you. Because it's your belief system and your belief system, and then I have my belief system. I say a lot. Uh, that may be true for you. It's not true for me. I may not say that out loud. But people are doing things or saying things, and I think that to myself a lot. And also, it has nothing to do with me. Whatever's going, that has nothing to do with me because I'm under the law of my own consciousness. This is my pathway, and you have your pathway, you have yours, everybody does. So we're, we're all on a journey, and I think the more conscientious we are about it and the more conscious choices we make, the better our journey is, or the easier, or the swifter, or the, we get more goodies, or we have better health. All that stuff. When I was beginning to work with people in the early days, I paid very close attention to what people said. And it became a habit with me, and I still do. I listen to what people say more than, you know, the words they're using and everything. And I, so often I think, oh, if you just wouldn't use those words. If you just take those three words out of your vocabulary, because people use uh, negative words a lot, the same ones over and over again. Uh, yes, I, I hear words, what much words, more than other people. What words would you take out of the vocabulary? Well, should to begin with. That, that's a, a big one. <laughs> because it, every time you say should, you're making yourself wrong. Either you were wrong, or you are wrong, or you're going to be wrong. So take that one out completely. And just a lot of negative expressions that people use. I'm not good enough, or this will never work, or oh, it's a rotten day, or you no, know, there's just tons of expressions. And we use them over and over again. And they don't do us any good at all. Everybody's journey is individual because we start from different places. So we can't all be having the same journey. But I think we get, we all get certain ahas. And that's when we've sort of learned something. We say, oh, okay. And then if we can keep that, what we've learned, and practice it, then we've made another step and we can move forward. Um, Yes, it's a lifetime journey, and we never stop learning. I'm 80, and I'm still learning. <laughs> Though the lessons are easier now than they used to be. I like to think of that when we start, we have all these boulders in front of us on our pathway, and we start to get the boulders out of the way, and you finally get to the point where it's gravel. And gravel you can handle, you know. And you can sweep gravel, and you can do things. So, and then occasionally there's an old boulder. Rolls back into your path. You think, oh, I thought I, I thought I had that one, but not completely. And and you know, also I think that when we learn lessons, we think, oh, I've learned that one; it'll never happen again. I've done that; and that's it. Well, how do you know you've done it? unless it comes by once more and see how you react. Have you really learned it? Is it really nothing for you? Have you gone beyond that? Or are you going to go right back into the same old reaction? See, we're never wrong. That's what we need to learn that. We're, we're always doing the best we can with the understanding and awareness and knowledge we have at that moment. I have a very firm belief that only good lies before me. And with that belief, it doesn't matter what comes, because it'll be only good. And I want it to be new and different and exciting and, and uh, stuff. No, I, I'm, I'm in my 80s now, I'm, and new things are happening. So let it, just let it, ha let it roll.